Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video on my channel. In this video, we will approach to selecting data in pandas. The cool thing is, we will be working with some real serial nutrition data from Kaggle. No worries, we will not yet ruin your breakfast, but we will prepare for doing so. So let's take a look at the data set in Kaggle. I will link it, of course, in the description. So if you are interested, here is some information on the data set. And come on, let's do some shoutouts to people who actually made this. So shout out to Ms. Isenberg, Mr. Dragisevich and Mrs. Jensen. Now let's start right ahead by importing the module pandas SPD. Afterwards, let's create a data frame DF, which we create by reading in the CSV file serial.csv. This is the default name from Kaggle. Of course, you have to specify your file path here, right? Just follow my instructions in the previous tutorials. Now let's print this data frame by just print df or just call df here. Now what we are seeing here is the data frame with the first five rows here and the last five rows. We are seeing those columns here. And yeah, that's pretty much it, what we can see about this data frame. So another possibility to quick check a data frame is just using the head function, so df.head, and then you are seeing the first five rows, and another option is the tail, where you're seeing the last five rows. But that's not what we want to cover right now. But let's do a quick statistical analysis of the whole data set. Panos has a pretty nice built-in function, which is called describe. So call it by df.describe and parentheses, and let's take a look. And what we see here now are some statistical measures like the mean, uh, standard deviation and some quantiles here. So you don't ne need to necessarily understand this here, but let's take one or two examples to make clear what's happening here. So the cereals have on average 2.5 gram of protein per 100 gram and have 6.9 gram of sugar per 100 gram. Whatever, this is really useful because uh, you are getting a quick insight into your data set, right? You're getting the, the number of the rows per column, you're getting some statistical measures, but this is not what we want to cover in this video. But you have to see this because this is actually pretty important. But let's get into the main part of our video. Let's get into the selection of data. Let's call the frame once again to have a better overview. So this is our data frame. Now, our goal is to find just one column here. So to select one column. How can we do so? Well, it's actually pretty easy. We're calling the data frame by its name. And then we are opening up square brackets and then we are containing the column name as a string. So let's take the name here, the, na the brand of the serials. So let's execute that. And you see we're getting only the name column here. So let's do another example. Let's get the proteins, the gains. And we're getting the protein column here, right? Another option just to show you would be df dot and then name and then you're getting the same thing. But this is not really recommended from me because if you have column names like name of something, um, pandas or python is interpreting this as uh, minus and this is not working at all. So I recommend you to use the square brackets and then the column name. So. What's really important is, if you are selecting one column, you're getting a series. Let's call this one time again. So let's call the name here. And this does not look like this, right? So this is a data frame, which you can see because it has columns and has this row entries. And this somehow looks different, right? Well, how can you create a data frame out of this? This is actually pretty easy. Just insert a second pair of square brackets here. And now you have one column as a data frame here. Okay. 
So remember, there are two types, series and data frames, okay? This one is a data frame, and without those additional square brackets, this one is a series, right? You could actually find the type of this by a type, and you are getting series here. And if we are finding the type of the frame here, which we just created, we are getting data frame, right? So the, there are two types. You don't necessarily have to exactly know what, what, what they are about, but just that you have already heard it, they are series and frames in pandas, okay? So how do you select multiple columns in pandas? Let's call the frame once again that we have a better overview. So this is the frame, frame, and now I want to call, for example, additional columns. So I want to have name, protein, and fat. So how can I achieve that? Well, that's actually pretty easy. We're calling the data frame, and now we're opening two square brackets. And now we're containing name, what did I say, protein and fat. And you have to actually take separate strings here. So remember to use those quotation marks and those commas here as a separator. And now, if we're executing that, we're getting this pretty nice data frame. Of course, these new data frames you can store in variables, right? So you could say like name, protein, fat, df, which is actually a pretty awkward name, um, is this data frame so that you can work with these new assigned variables, of course. But nevertheless, we covered selecting single columns and multiple columns. So what's left? We could also select rows. How does that work? Well, to get certain rows, and let's call our data frame again to have a better overview. So I want to have the first 10 rows actually of this data frame. How can I do so? Well, this works exactly the same as, for example, list um, selection. So it's working with those index values. So if I'm typing this one here, I'm getting the first 10 rows starting at zero, ending at nine, because the 10 is excluded, right? So that's it for selecting rows. Now, what's the most important thing in data selection in pandas is to understand the df.log and df.iLog function. So if I'm using the df.iLog function, I'm taking the same syntax as here. So if I'm using df.iLog and then taking 0 to 10, I'm getting the exact same data frame here as if I'm using this one here, right? Contrary, if I'm using the log function, and this is important to understand, I'm getting another data frame. Why? Or what's happening here? Well, I'm getting a row more here. I'm getting this row. The tenth row is included now. Why? Because the log function is using labels and not integer positions. Okay? So while the iLog function is just giving me the position of this row, the log function is taking a look at the actual names. So the log function is interpreting these here as names and is understanding this syntax like, okay, give me all the rows from 0 to 10 and 10 is included because this is a label, right? So it's not a position when you use the log function. Again, when you use iLog here, you have integer positions and the 10th row is missing, okay? We'll do another repetition in the end of this video, but let's do one more thing now because we have to cover one more thing and that is, what is if I want to filter both by column and rows? Well, then I'm taking the DFI log function with the syntax. I'm defining the row range first and then the column range. So DFI log, and let's take the first 10 rows and the first two columns. And here we are, we are getting this, right? So this is again working with integer positions. So this is just counting 
um, through the rows. So it's, uh, sorry, the columns. So name is the first one, um, MFR is the second one, and so on. So if I'm getting a five here, I'm getting the first five uh, columns, right? Now, again, the difference between DF log and DFI log. DFI log works with, again, integer positioning, and DF log works with labels. So to make this more clear, let's use the DF uh, log function again. So df.log, and now give me the first 10 rows, and now the 10th row is included again. And now I need the columns. How can I do that? Because this is working with labeling. So if I'm typing this one here, I'm getting an error for sure. I'm getting an error, right? Instead, if I'm using iLog, it works perfectly because I have positioning here. But how can I solve this with the log function? Well, I'm, I can say 0 to 10 and then give me the label. So give me a name here. The, the, the name column and then this works perfectly this also works perfectly if I'm using several uh, co uh, columns so you have to specify a square bracket here so you're using again name and let's use the gains here protein and let's close those brackets and works perfectly right so again for positional selection use DFI log for label selection, use DF log. I hope this video helped you. In the next tutorial, we will cover data manipulation stuff. Looking forward to see you there. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.